Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our first unit titled Getting Started. Topic for the day is going to be energy, and I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I've got a lot of stuff to cover. I'm going to do my best to keep this short, but forgive me if it isn't. So let's go ahead and jump on in with our objectives and get going. By the end of this video, you should know or be able to do the following things. First of all, be able to define energy. Easy. Second, differentiate between energy and power and kinetic and potential energy. And finally, discuss and apply the first and second laws of thermodynamics. So you can see today is all about energy, so let's go ahead and actually define the term energy, which is simply the ability to do work or transfer heat. And really, there's not much more I can say about it than that. Energy is the stuff that allows us to do things, and I'm just going to leave it at that. We're going to define it more as we go along. So one of the things that you've got to realize is that energy is life's necessity. The world does not exist without energy. Most of the energy that we use here on Earth comes directly from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And all of the energy that we or plants take in is used to conduct um, life processes in some way or another. So plants take in solar energy. They use that solar energy to rearrange carbon dioxide into glucose and carbohydrates. Animals eat those plants and we get the energy that is stored in the chemical bonds of those carbohydrates which allows us to carry out the body processes that keep us alive on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'll talk in a little bit about different forms of energy but for this first part I just want you to realize that solar energy coming in from the sun is stored as chemical energy and carbohydrates and when we eat the plants or the animals that have eaten those plants we get the energy as chemical energy and that's what keeps us going. As we go throughout the year, you're going to need to be aware of several different units of energy. And I want to talk about two of them, and I want to talk about the difference between energy and power. So the two units that I want you to know is the joule and the kilowatt hour. Now, joules are a measure of energy, and a joule is defined as using one watt of power for one second. Now this would be like saying, I have the dimmest light bulb ever. That light bulb is only one watt. If I turn that light bulb on for one, for one second, I have used one joule of energy. So one watt for one second equals one joule. And this is a measure of energy. Energy is just saying how much energy is needed to get the work done. What does it take to actually get the work done? Um, if you were to think of energy as like a river, the amount of energy are you, you are using is basically talking about how wide or how narrow that river is. So a one watt light bulb, that is a very, very narrow river that is just using a little tiny stream of energy. A 65 watt light bulb is a much larger river that is using a lot more energy. Now, power is using energy over time. So it's taking that river that is flowing or has the ability to flow and saying we are having this river flowing for one hour. So the unit that you need to know of power is the kilowatt hour. Now a kilowatt is another unit of energy, one kilowatt. So kilowatt is KW. One kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts. That is a conversion that you will need to know and that tells us how wide our river is a kilowatt wide power of river power sorry let me try that again a kilowatt wide river of power is a pretty wide uh, river the kilowatt hour the kwh basically talks about how long you are using that energy so you got a kilowatt of energy that's how wide your river is a kilowatt hour is letting that river of energy flow for one hour. So power is just energy used over time. Let me see if I can wrap that up and sum it up pretty cleanly. Energy is just how much electricity is going through something. Power is how long you let that amount of energy run for. So in units of energy, you've got the joule, the watt, and the kilowatt. Those are all telling you how big the river is. Uh, for power, your main unit is going to be the kilowatt hour, and that's telling you how long you are letting that river run. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult to get your head around. Um, when we talk about energy, we're going to talk about three different types. We're going to talk about kinetic energy, potential energy, and chemical energy. 
Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. When something is moving, it is demonstrating kinetic energy. Potential energy is energy of place. That is energy that is stored. So for example, you see the picture of the dam here. All of that water that is stored behind the dam, piled up above the rest of the river, has potential energy. It's not moving yet, it's not doing any work, but because it is raised up and elevated, it has the ability to do work. Once that water is released down through the dam, it's going to turn turbines, and that would be a form of kinetic energy. And then you got chemical energy, which is potential energy that is stored in chemical bonds. When we eat food and our body digests it, we get the chemical energy that is stored in the bonds of that food. So you need to be able to keep those three straight and separate. And you also need to know the difference between temperature and heat. Heat is pure energy. Heat is just, I mean, it's just energy. Temperature is a measurement. What you are measuring when you measure the temperature of something is you are measuring how quickly the atoms in that substance are moving. The more heat that you add, the quicker the atoms move. The less heat there is, the slower the uh, atoms move. So if you take a batch of water, add heat to it, so you're putting that energy into it, as that energy goes in, it causes the atoms in the water to move more quickly, which causes the temperature to go up. Take that pan of water off the stove, the energy leaves the water, the heat leaves the water, the molecules slow down, and the temperature goes down. So know that heat is energy, temperature is a measurement of that energy. We're going to start rolling on towards the end here with the first and second laws of thermodynamics. So I think it was yesterday's video, I talked about energy can either be, or I talked about matter cannot be created nor destroyed, it really just kind of changes forms or changes partners. The same is true of energy. All of the energy that is in the universe right now has always been here as long as the universe has been around. So energy cannot be created, energy cannot be destroyed, it just simply changes form. So in an, any process or reaction, you might take chemical energy and turn it into kinetic energy. You might take potential energy and turn it into kinetic energy. You might take kinetic energy and turn it into heat energy. So you could say that, for example, you start out with 100 joules of energy to turn the crank on a bicycle. In turning the crank on that bicycle, you might have 80 joules that go to actually moving the bicycle forward, and then you could have 20 joules that are lost to the heat of friction, warming up the crank, and the sound of the bike moving. So putting in 100 joules, you're getting 80 of motion, and you are getting 20 of sound and heat. No energy has been lost. We still have 100 joules right here. We have just changed the form of the energy. Which leads on to the second law of thermodynamics, which says that in any transformation of energy from one form to the other, the quantity remains the same. So you start with 100, you end with 100. But the quality of the energy diminishes. If you notice, we started out with that 100 joules of energy. Only 80 joules of the energy went to moving the bicycle. You lost 20 joules to sound and heat. So you went from higher quality to lower quality. And any reaction, this will happen. You, there aren't any like processes on Earth, at least that I know of, that run at 100% efficiency. So recognize that in a conversion, you are always going to lose some of the quality of the energy, and that's the second law of thermodynamics. And to demonstrate this, I wanna show you a quick energy efficiency calculation. And energy efficiency is basically talking about how much of the original energy put in actually is used to do the intended job. So let's go ahead and talk about what it takes to light a light bulb. And we'll give you some in some numbers that we're going to work with. I'm going to be looking off the side because I got my numbers here on the side. So we are going to say that we have one ton of coal. And we're going to talk about lighting a light bulb. So one ton of coal, and we're going to say that's equal to 24,000 megajoules of energy. We take that coal, we put it into a power plant, and we use that coal to produce electricity. On the other end of the power plant, we get out 84 100 megajoules of electricity, okay? So everything that was lost, this means that we lost about, let's see, how much is that, 10? All right, so we lost 16,000 joules. All of this was lost to heat and noise. Forgive me for the lights going out there. So. Uh, we lost that 16,000 to heat and noise, which means that this first conversion was 35% uh, 
efficient, which means that 35% of the energy that went in came out the other side. Now, the next phase of the process is we got to take that electricity and we need to transmit it down the power lines. So as that electricity, this 8,400 megajoules of energy travels down the power lines, you are going to lose 10% to noise and again, heat. So same thing, we're losing it to noise and heat. So of that 84, thousand joules that went down the power lines you get 90 percent at the other end percentages are always decimals and then the last part is we are going to use an old school incandescent light bulb old school incandescent light bulbs are only five percent efficient so that means that of the energy that makes it into that light bulb you lose 95 percent and most of that is lost to heat so what we find is we take this last zero five and at the end we multiply all those numbers together we get 0 0.016 which comes out to 1.6 percent so this process of using coal to power a traditional incandescent light bulb is 1.6 percent efficient. That's why people talk about using LEDs and CFL bulbs because they take a lot less energy and waste a lot less energy than your traditional light bulbs. Wrap up. I think this is the last slide for the day. Um, you need to know about the difference between energy quality and energy, uh, about energy quality. So sources of energy are talked about as either being high quality or low quality. If an energy source is high quality, it is energy dense, which means that for the weight, it has a lot of energy and it's easy to transport. So an example of high quality energy source would be gasoline. Gasoline has got about 44 joules, 44 megajoules of energy per kilogram. So in one kilogram of energy, you got about 44 kilojoule, or, uh, megajoules of energy. And gasoline is very easy to transport and use. You put it in a can, you throw it in the engine, good to go. Wood, on the other hand, is a low quality energy source because it only has 20 megajoules of energy per kilogram, so it's got half the energy of gasoline for the same weight, and it's really hard to transport, and you can't just stick a log in your engine to burn it. So I know that was probably a long video. My apologies, but you do need to have your head around this idea of energy because we're going to use it all the way through our course. That's what I got for today. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.